uh, 20 years or two decades in the life of any, either an individual, in a, a marriage or even an institution, is actually a milestone celebration. It's a big deal and it needs all to be celebrated. You'd have gone through a number of things in 20 years. So that is why we are celebrating. We started a humble beginning in 2003 and by God's grace 2023, 20, 20 years and we think we need to celebrate it because we have made some significant achievements and that ought to be celebrated. It's also a time for us to sit and reflect on what has gone on and see how we can re-strategize. So that's why we're celebrating uh, the 20, 20 years of um, postgraduate medical training in Ghana, that's our theme, and also to let people know who we are and what we are doing. Since the late 19th century, Ghana had always wanted to educate uh, or train doctors locally. Uh, but it really didn't crystallize until uh, the time of uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, uh, president, who in 1961-62 founded the Ghana Medical School, which later on became the faculty of the University of Ghana, therefore became the University of Ghana Medical School. Now, before that, the Americans had wanted to do it, uh, to found the school for, the, for, for Ghana because we didn't have enough money to do it on our own. But for reasons we won't discuss now, you know, Nkrumah decided that we would do it on our own. So the medical school comes on stream 1962. And uh, along the way, by 1970, when uh, some products had come out already, the leaders of the profession decided that it was time we started thinking of uh, doing postgraduate training locally. Before that, postgraduate medical training was only available mainly in the UK. Um, not only for ordinary medical training, but also for uh, postgraduate uh, medical training. Now, when we established a medical school there, here, <clears throat> there was still the need for postgraduate training and for some time the West African College of Surgeons and the West African College of Physicians provided that need. But <clears throat> it was felt that it did not satisfy all the present needs of Ghanaian medical personnel. From 1993, when Komodo Bimpe asked a group to start thinking about it. I would say that was when the ministry really started thinking about establishing the college. Then, in 1996, there was a, a Ghana Medical Association conference in Kumasi. And the theme was on postgraduate medical training in Ghana. And the need for a medical uh, postgraduate medical college for Ghana. After that, in 1997, jointly with the Ministry of Health, Ghana Medical Association, myself and Professor Wilson were invited to join again in the advocacy uh, at the Institute of Economic Affairs. A booklet was produced that will sort of guide the vision for progressing the idea that we were putting forward. There were task forces uh, established uh, to try and uh, get this, um, to study the whole thing. Um, I was part of one or two of the task forces, but the most serious uh, step was taken when um, the MPP put in their manifesto for the election of 2000 that when they came into power, they would establish a postgraduate uh, medical uh, college in the country. And they won the election in 2000 and came into power. And the person who became the Minister for Health 
was Dr. Richard Anani, who happened to have been or had undergone uh, training or was fully aware of what this involved. In 2000, a board was formed. And when that board was formed, I think it was Professor Bobby who was the chair. That was 2000. Then I came in 2001. My party has said that they wanted to come on the basis of removing the cash and carry. And I had gone to the parliamentary committee to say that we were going to set up a national health insurance scheme. And so straight away I said, yes, I know that this thing had gone on. Can we get um, what had been proposed? It came and I said, Let it, let's go on. In November 2001, the Minister for Development of the Netherlands government, the lady called uh, Evelyn Hefkins, came to Ghana, I, I think, to, to assess what the um, help they've given to the health program in Ghana was doing. So they were sponsoring doctors and paying for whatever and so on uh, among the de development partners. So a meeting was held in uh, Sunyan and I was invited to attend to make a presentation. So I made a presentation as to the vision, as at least as I thought of it at the time, because you know, we, we, we hadn't got an office, we hadn't got anything at the time. So. And along the way, as I presented uh, the vision which we had, which uh, was portrayed as being self-reliant, and we're going to use our own people, use our own facilities, use our people abroad, if possible, and so on. As I was making my presentation, Jacob Ejibilamte, who happened to be the Minister of Information at the time, was sitting by me. She just gave me a nudge and said, Paul, Paul, She's giving you five million, five million dollars. So that made my day, that made the, the trip worthwhile. So when we came back, I could start rolling, bring into fruition the dreams I was having. Uh, there was also an opportunity for us to use um, support from the British government, the DFID, Department for uh, international development, they are funding. Uh, at that time, we were also undergoing health sector reforms in Ghana. And uh, it required that we build capacity. And in some of that capacity building, it required them bringing consultants that is in, in general health systems development into Ghana. And there was a funding which was about two million pounds which supported that. Part of that was also for us to build capacity. So we sent people out into the UK. In, in a year, over 100 health professionals were sent to the UK, some for courses longer than six months, others for courses uh, less than three months. And we developed a lot of capacity. The area of nephrology, the area of radiology, the area of oncology, where some of these, and then blood transfusion services. First, we needed to have a rector who was going to ensure things move. Second, we had a president who was very interested in ensuring that things move. The president ensured that whatever the rector needed to get things moving was done, then that was either through the ministry or through other areas where the president can easily get things done. The president was President Kofo and the rector was Professor Paul Nyam. And both of them did so well to ensure that we had whatever we needed to get the college as it is today. This relationship for me started 
uh, maybe two years before the college was established, Professor Nyame visited the U.S. and uh, wanted as many of the Ghanaian specialists to attend a conference at the uh, Ghana Embassy to tell us about the plans for the college and how we might contribute to it. And so from those series of meetings, eventually the college was established and we were part of the founding fellows of the college at the time. Looking for an office, Honorable Yalbema was uh, decent enough to take me in his car and take me around Accra looking for an office. And the last one he took me to was what is now the National Development Planning Commission office. I think it used to be the residence of uh, East Chairman before, but it had been abandoned and it was in a rather grotty state. Um, he looked at me and I could see him uh, smile, thinking I wouldn't take it. Uh, I looked at the place, it was a big compound, big house and so on. I said I would take it. So I took it. Uh, my, my aim was not that that place would be a permanent uh, uh, residence. And um, I kept on looking for a place for permanent buildings. Again, I went to see Mr. Yabema. And uh, still, uh, again, he was very generous. And um, looking for a place, I couldn't find any piece of land or wherever where we could say we were going to build. But I was fortunate I came across a very fine uh, lady, doctor, Dr. Cynthia Banaman, who told me, Prof, Prof, that building there hasn't got anybody living there. So we'll go and look at it. And we are troubled by you know, thieves and so on and so forth. So she wished it to be taken away. So I went and looked at it. Again, it was falling apart. I mean, it was one of these old bungalows next door to where the uh, National Cathedral is being built. So it, was, it wasn't in a very good state. They approached us as architects with what they wanted for the college building. And based on their brief, what we call a brief, they wanted administrative offices, seminar rooms, meeting rooms, an auditorium, and so on and so forth. So they gave us their brief and then we set off to start with the conceptual designs. Well, first of all, you have to have in mind that this is basically a school, in quotes. But a, a school with a difference. A school which had adults coming in who had needs and so on. So you had to have places where people could be taught. You, could have, you should have a place where you, you would have an administration. You should have a place, those days, you know, we uh, were even thinking about virtual teaching and so on. Indeed, I even went to uh, Scotland to see how it operated, you know. Uh, people could consult patients and so on, using online and so, and so on and so on, and I saw it. So we had to make provision for that. We needed, and most importantly, we needed, um, we, we, well, we needed a hall. First, I thought 400 would do, 400 for a hall we do a all a small college. And then I started traveling around, went to this place, went to this place. Each time I traveled and I came back, I changed my mind. The initial concept was to provide for 500. He asked for 250 in addition to the 500. And that meant we had to introduce a gallery. So we had to go back to the drawing table and then incorporates the gallery. So the works at that portion of the construction was stalled until we got our textual drawings for the gallery, the structural engineering drawings, mechanical drawings, all the drawings that had to come with the electrical drawings done before we continued with that part of the building. The hospitality wing of the Ghana College of Physicians and Surgeons it started after we had come up with the initial request from the college. We had the first rector who kept coming back to us, having discussions with us. And he came over to tell us 
Look, usually when we have functions, we have doctors coming from all the regions, all over, you know, the, the nation. When they come over, some of them end up in hotels and so on. We came together as a team with my, you know, my senior partner at the time, Mr. Daniel Osekufo. We had discussions on it. There was this other architect who also worked with me on this project, Yao Sechipekwin. And we decided that we'll ask the structural engineers to design the foundation to carry two more floors, you know. So with that, when Professor Nyami came back to request for the accommodation for guests and so on, it was quite easy for us to incorporate it. The mandate of the college under the act that establishes us is to provide specialist training in medicine, surgery and related disciplines to promote continuous professional development for all doctors in medicine, surgery and related disciplines to promote research in medical research generally and then also to contribute to public health policy in the country. The primary role of the college was to train uh, doctors to have more skills. The idea is that as you acquire more skills, you're able to do more for the patients in, in healthcare practice. So you come to us, we give you the training, then you go out there and then you do the performance. Um, the other way we impact um, practice is that our continued professional development programs. So after you finish your training, you may not even be a fellow of the college or a member of the college, but you're a doctor practicing in Ghana. We organize training programs on different aspects of healthcare and we advertise that and people come from all over the country to listen and to acquire skills and go and improve uh, practice. And one of the mandates is that we should promote research in medicine, surgery and related disciplines. So we approach this, let me say in two main ways. One way is um, in the training of the, of the specialists. So in our specialist training, we have the membership training, that's the basic specialist training. Then the advanced specialist training that we call the fellowship training. So everybody who does the fellowship training has to do independent research. So that's one way by which we promote research. So every single doctor who does a fellowship training does a research project which is assessed in their, in their exams. And then also we encourage them to publish this research. We currently have a system whereby people are supported to publish the research in any journal so that the research dissemination happens. The other thing we do is that we have what we call occasional lectures. We invite um, professionals who are maybe top-notch within their area and then we invite them to give lectures. Either sometimes they lead tutorials for our residents, sometimes they come in and give actual lectures in person in Ghana and we, we invite all the um, other stakeholders to come and listen. The other aspect of promoting research is that we have a small research unit here where fellows of the college can apply for research grants and the grants will be managed from the college with the research we're going on through here and then there is um, publication of their findings. Our contribution to medical practice and patient care have been mainly through our training and the products of the, of the training. So with, um, with the establishment of the college, there have been more hospitals now that have become training centers than existed in the past. Usually medical school training takes between five to six years, depending on which model you used. After medical school, you are expected to go through what we call housemanship, which usually takes two years. Then after that, you can start your postgraduate training. For this college, um, we expect that you must have served at least one year in a district setting before you come for training. However, we have made a few caveats to that. There are a few faculties that we feel uh, the number of specialists we have there are not that many. So this one year spending after your housemanship has been waived for those groups. At the time that we finished school, 
the postgraduate training in Ghana was only the West Africa. Radiology was very, very new, and uh, most people had to travel outside the country to be able to specialize. And we didn't want to go, we wanted to stay in our own country. So when the Ghana College came, it was a big opportunity for me to just have my training here in Ghana and also contribute to the college and make the college a success. When we look at our trainees, um, we, we started in 2003. With our first, um, the people who we trained, we started with 24 who registered for exam and eight passed in 2007 and that was about 33 percent. Now we're looking at an average pass of 84 percent. We started in a particular way and it has forced our sister colleges in West Africa to also join, uh, adopt our style in terms of the systematic way we, we train, in terms of structured approach that we brought to bear on what we're doing. Uh, we now manage to harmonize the foolish fellowship programs across West Africa and therefore the quality of training and the quality of the products is harmonized and it's the same. The first level of training is what we call the membership training. It, is, it varies, it's between two to four years depending on the specialty that you choose. And those, those programs are run in hospitals. The college has accredited hostels across the country. And so when we take you, we post you to a particular facility and then you go and do your training there. When you finish your membership training, then you come and do your fellowship training. After your membership training, you will be awarded what is called a specialist. So the Ministry of Health, Ghana Health Service, all these facilities will call you a specialist. When you come to do the fellowship training, it varies between two to three years, depending on what you select. Then you'll be called a senior specialist. Then you will go into the same healthcare space to practice. So the training um, on the average, um, if everything goes well for you, takes between five to six years from the moment you start your membership training through to the fellowship training. The college trains and the highest qualification is that of the fellowship. So you train and uh, when you attain the highest qualification, you become a fellow. The college has over the years adopted measures you know, in line with advancement in, in technologies uh, in order to make its uh, teaching programs uh, worthwhile. I mean, an example that I can give is that when the college started, we used to write, uh, our multiple choice questions used to be uh, marked by pen, by, by pencil, uh -huh. and then we moved on to machine doing the uh, marking and now we have the computer-based testing system where the candidates take the multiple choice exams and the marks are available almost immediately. There's something we call incision. This is a program, if you get a particular kind of glasses, it's, you see things in three dimensions. So you, it, it's as if you are there uh, operating. So if you would have a special glasses, you can see it well and then do that. So we are doing that. And we have uh, now, some lectures have been recorded on our, on our website so that students, any time you want, you get there and then you go in. We have a lot of virtual lectures and virtual training that residents can log on anywhere they are, either in their training centers or at the comfort of their homes, and they are able to assess current trends of uh, technology. The school now wants to move into the modular project. And the modular project is very, a very good thing to do because it's not as expensive as moving doctors from where they are and bringing them to Accra and Kumasi. And they are, we are interested in this because it will serve all the doctors, it will serve the community, it will serve the patients. You sit at your village, do your own thing, learn and become a specialist. We've been able to involve external examiners from as far away as New Zealand, for example, because they have been able to join the exam via Zoom. There's a lot of collaboration and partnership. We've partnered with other bodies 
like uh, for radiology, we have Health for the World, we have European Society of Radiology, and they give us lectures sometimes weekly. Ghana Physicians and Surgeons Foundation of North America, and so we have a relationship with uh, the Ghana College. And uh, generally it's a relationship in which we, we try to um, foster different levels of collaboration as we define them mutually between the college and ourselves. Collaboration between uh, Ghana Health Service, collaboration between the Ministry of Health, collaboration between the private sector, collaboration between the Nurses and Midwives Council, Pharmaceutical Council, everybody who is at a community level or district or regional level doing supervision and teaching, we all have to come together to be able to do this successfully. So with that collaboration, in actual fact, the catchword is collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. And for us in radiology, we, we use AI, artificial intelligence. For example, um, if you want to, let's say, do a research on tuberculosis, you can just feed the AI into the machine. So when the X-rays are rolled, it's able to pick up all the potential um, S-rays that can be tuberculosis. So we in the in radiology, we use it so much. Uh, especially when the, the COVID time came, there was software that were able to pick up the COVID from the S-rays and the CTs. So that even if the person reading it cannot, at least if there's a prompt that it could be COVID. If you look at it, using these enhanced techniques, it will give us greater leverage in training our candidates. We have trained up to date about 1,700 members and then about 200 fellows. And they are contributing to the health sector. And of course, that will impact on the health delivery system and of course, on patient outcomes. I think the Ghana College of Physicians has served the purpose it was set up for very well. In other words, to develop manpower for the health needs of the country. Uh, essentially, to produce physicians and surgeons to serve the hospitals and other health facilities that are being put up or already exist in the country. When we started working here as a group of psychiatrists with the college, the there were 12 psychiatrists in the whole country, 12. Half of these psychiatrists had been our own teachers, so they were very old and they were still working because there were very few of them. Now I can say that as we speak, there are over 50 residents training to become psychiatrists in the country. So I think we've, we've contributed a lot to that process. Before the college was set up, there were very few specialists scattered all over the country. The concentration was in Accra and Kumasi. We have significantly increased in the number of specialists at our facilities. We have seen a contribution into reduction in mortality. We have seen an improvement in quality of care at all levels. We have seen that there's access even to the remotest area to certain services which otherwise would not have been existed and so they've really uh, contributed significantly to not only to the service but also to the knowledge and the way we are able to contribute to in the sub-region as a, as a body, as a service. We are able to contribute to WHO because of the training. A lot of the people who have been trained, I mean all the people myself who managed COVID were products of the college. And if you look at how we are claimed globally for the way it was, that tells you that the college has been very, very, very useful. When we come to the training sites, when we started in 2003, it was basically Kumasi and Accra, okay? And then we had a few places where there were rotation, about 17 rotations. Accra and Kumasi were fully uh, accredited for all uh, specialties. In the family medicine sector, we are training at different places. We are training at a place like the Tekwashi Memorial Hospital. We are training at a place like Agogo. Agogo Hospital, we are 
training at a place like uh, Nyaho Medical Center, apart from the big centers of Kumasi and Accra. That's what we're doing now. And I think the college wants to go that way for all the other faculties. That can change their curriculum to suit that particular practice. Apart from Accra and Kumasi, which are, tra which are accredited for all specialties, we have places like um, um, Cape Coast Teaching Hospital, Ho Teaching Hospital, 37 Military Hospital, and they have been accredited for between three to six specialties. In addition to that, we have about 83 others who are, we have in rotation. So realize that we are expanded in terms of where our training sites are. In the training center, doctors are, in a sense, they're forced to come together, talk with each other, and that tends to improve um, patient patient care and the trainees I mean there are more people undergoing postgraduate training now in hospitals than in the past that alone also contributes to improve them um, patient care and from the aspect of the Ministry of Health and Ghana Health Service once a place becomes a training center there is also the the pressure to provide certain levels of equipment so as we get more hospitals being training centers the infrastructure the equipment in the hospitals tends to improve, dialogue between the doctors tends to improve, and the resultant thing is that the patient care also is better. One can say that, for example, from the time that the college was started, we had an institutional maternal mortality rate of about 270 uh, per uh, 100,000 live births. Now it's dropped to about 112. Definitely, the skills and the access to specialist care has significantly contributed to this kind of uh, gains, including even new newborn deaths related, and access generally to specialist care has improved. The college has fulfilled its mandate to a large extent. The numbers of specialists trained is uh, fantastic, and it's improving all the time. But the number of senior specialists trained is, I believe, below uh, expectation and it could be better. Again, at, in the beginning, when we were developing the um, uh, programs, we also thought of sub-specialization training. Uh, I haven't seen much of that. I haven't seen much of that, and I think that's also one area we can do more. It stemmed the flow of the medical brain dream from Ghana. It definitely did, but things have changed now because the world has changed since uh, the COVID. Things have happened elsewhere which have drained the medical manpower, and so they are again going back to pinching from developing countries. And Ghana, and Nigeria, and Kenya are definitely targets. So this has uh, initiated the drain again. It isn't because the. Uh, college is not doing what it must do. It's because of external factors, mostly economic and financial. I, I, would, I would like to see the college in 20, 20 years from now being at the point where, with the support of our, say, with the Ministry of Health and Ghana Health Service, we are able to train people in, let me say, every aspect of, um, of medicine in this country. I mean, when it comes to the technology, whether it's um, the minimal invasive techniques in surgery, image guided like the ultrasound or MRI guided intervention procedures, we are able to do it in the country. And um, 20 years from now, all these new hospitals that um, we say we are building, I mean, for us to have training going on, 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 on over there. I would like to see a college that is preferably independent of government sponsorship, that we can raise our own funds, and that gives us the flexibility of doing a lot of things that we can't do now. When you look at other countries like the UK, the US, their postgraduate medical training colleges are actually independent, independent bodies. They support the government, but then they are able to generate their own income and drive things. So 20 years from now, if we are able to hit that, that will be a major that will be a, a, a major step. Next 20 years, my expectations are great. I'm looking at, at, like I said, leveraging technology. 
I mean, in all, uh, as every aspect of training, research, in terms of therapeutic diagnostics. Uh, we will work with the specialists in the AI field. I mean, the people say it's frightening, but we work with them. We are not specialists, and I think that we will take the advantages that he offers in our training so that we can provide world-class teaching experience. And then more advocacy. I think we haven't done much of that. So again, that is why we will have the society of fellows and members, and we would be going out of health issues, advocacy on that. What is this? What is the college's you know, position on that? And that is what the fellows and So yes, I think that it has exciting times and next 20 years, God's grace, we we'll see the college move from one level to a higher level. That's my expectation.